My first guest is synonymous with her nationally syndicated radio talk show and has one of the highest rated radio shows in the world. She's received many awards, many honors for her outstanding contributions. Dr. Laura, as she's affectionately called, is a licensed marriage and family therapist, a woman who stands for family values. I want you to take a look at this. She's one of the nation's most popular radio talk show hosts. Dr. Laura Schlesinger has been giving advice for the past 30 years, but her signature has been the honest and frank manner in which she gives her callers a healthy dose of morals, values, and faith in her answers. All I'm doing is giving my perspective on how people ought to lead a good life. If you don't want it, that's okay. Do something else. The Dr. Laura Show is tied for fourth highest rated radio talk show in the United States. In September 2002, the industry magazine Talkers named Laura Schlesinger as the seventh greatest radio talk show host of all time. In April 2005, Schlesinger was nominated for induction into the Radio Hall of Fame. She has written eight New York Times bestsellers, such as 10 Stupid Things Women and Men Do to Mess Up Their Lives, The Ten Commandments, The Significance of God's Laws in Everyday Life, The Proper Care and Feeding of Husbands, and her most recent book, The Proper Care and Feeding of Merit. She's been featured on a variety of shows, including Larry King Live, The Oprah Winfrey Show, 2020, Hannity and Combs, and others. She's become an icon in the culture yearning for a moral compass, but perhaps what she is best known for is being her kid's mom. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Laura. I'm so delighted to have you. God bless you. What a joy it is to have you on the Helpline program. Thank you. I was watching that little video. I've had more hairdos than <laughs> anybody should have had in the last year. Well, you look beautiful. Thank you. I don't hardly know where to start. How bad is the marriage situation, not only in America, but around the world? How bad? Well, I, I think there are a number of places around the world it's in worse state than it is here, which is very scary. Uh, I think it's not in very good shape because we have too many influences which tell us that just shacking up or not even bothering, just having a kid if you feel like it, you know, sort of like getting a new purse. Uh, and you don't need a father, you don't need a husband, we don't, the sacraments don't mean anything. Uh, I, I just think it is a terrible shame that, especially women, have been brainwashed into thinking that their bodies, their beings, their psyches, the spiritual self has so little meaning that being so frivolous about it all is somehow going to be satisfying when it isn't. Uh, when a man is going to get down on one knee and swear his life to you in front of God, mm. that's different than, hey, baby. Yeah. Don't you think? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, with half the marriages, in America, ending up in divorce, how do you bring a marriage back from disaster? Well, it's very funny because one of the chapters in here is called To Hell and Back. <laughs> I thought that was a good way to put it. Uh, I use the calls that I've taken on the air, and people write me all the time, uh, their stories of how it was over. I mean, there were people in there who were actually divorced and came back together because they each, or one in particular, had to realize that he or she was living for him or herself mm -hmm. and not the marriage. That's why I called it the proper care and feeding of the marriage. The marriage is an, is, it is an entity outside of you that you have to nourish and take care of. It isn't all about what I'm getting, what I need, what I want at any moment, but my joy comes from bringing joy. I mean, that's a pretty basic religious principle. Mm -hmm. And so when we bring that into the mentality on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, I mean, I, a lady called the other day, you know, who, she thought I was an idiot, read the book, <laughs> said, okay, I'll try it, but you're an idiot. 
And uh, I love when they start out from that place, because I know by the end of the letter, it's probably going to get better. Uh, but you're an idiot. This is really silly. It's too simplistic and all of that. Well, uh, here we are with Valentine's Day, and her husband calls and says I'm going to be a little bit late, and she's been with the baby all day, and she's aggravated. And uh, she's starting to get angry and angry. He's three hours late. Wow. So by this point, she is ready for what is going to spew out of her mouth in rage and anger, right? She remembers me, and she remembers the book. And she goes, okay, we'll see if Dr. Laura's an idiot today. So she takes a shower, puts a little perfume on. He walks through the door. She says, hi, honey, I missed you. And he goes, oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry I was late, but it took me more time to make this for you. Oh, Whoa. So if she wow. had wow. ripped him, and I always say, that's, you that's get the like, best out of people with like honey. That's like the gift of magic. Yes. Yeah, we're talking yes. about that. Yeah, that's the later. foundation of the book. Tell me, is there any such thing as a perfect marriage? Yes, and a perfect marriage is not perfect because now, everybody behaves I, I, I'm, right. I'm sure everybody <laughs> watching right now around Thinks the I'm world. I'm an idiot again. Here we yeah. go. Yeah, okay. It's an attitude. It is not that everything is perfect with health and money and circumstance and children and, and all the things that go on in the world. It's not that things are all the ducks are in a row. It's that you, are, you have two people together who are willing to give when they almost have nothing, when they're upset, when they're angry, when they're hurt, when they're depressed, whatever it is, that when they seemingly have nothing, that they're still willing to generate giving is a greater act of love than when you have a lot, when you're feeling good. If, if you're affectionate with your spouse simply because you feel good, that's not a gift. That's mostly taking care of yourself. But if you're affectionate with your spouse because you want to convey love and you know they need that mm -hmm. at the moment and you don't feel like it, that's the greatest gift. Can, can you take a few moments? You can give her a real bit of applause because I tell you, I, I don't think there's anything that's more serious, more needed than what you're doing on your radio talk show. Helping people come face to face, tearing the mask off, and facing reality. And it's tough, because sometimes people see me as mean for doing that, uh, but just like a physician who had to dig to get the splinter out, sometimes it's going to be unpleasant. But if I had to give one, one, just one piece of advice for a good marriage, Yes. Behave like the kind of person you would want to come home to. Think about that. You know, I, I think our viewers are going to want to run out and get your latest book. This is your newest book yeah. now. The Proper Care and Feeding of Marriage. You really have to feed your marriage to make it work. That's why I have that title. And you can get it, helpline, tv.com, or most any of the, bookstore. Any bookstore. I'm sure all the bookstores carry your books. Please take advantage of this opportunity and go out and get the book. Dr. Lohr, you know, I want you to talk to me in our last few moments about the gift of Maggie. I was so impressed with that story. Would you tell it to oh, us? Oh, I would love to. Uh, would you like me to direct it to the Please. audience? Uh, uh, o. Henry wrote a short story, and in this story, there's a young couple married, very much in love, very sweet, very kind to each other, but they're very, 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 very extremely, did you get very poor, okay? They have no money for Christmas presents, and it's Christmas. And the only thing he owns is a gold watch which has been handed down for generations in his family. That's it. Otherwise, they have enough to eat and to keep warm. And she is just a lovely young lady who has this long, beautiful hair that she's been growing her whole life. That's her prized possession. And so they knew they couldn't get each other Christmas presents. A lot of people grouse about that, hurt each other in families about that. Well, Christmas came. She handed him a box. He was perplexed. He opened it up, and there was a 14-carat gold chain. You know how the men used to wear those gold watches inside a, a little pocket in the vest, and then the chain would hang? Well, she bought him the gold chain, and he is stunned, and he hands her a box. 
And in the box for her is this bejeweled comb that women used to wear around the turn of that century. They took their hair, piled it up, and stuck the comb in it. So he gave her a bejeweled comb for hair that she had cut and sold to buy him the gold chain for the watch he had sold to buy her the hair comb. And it was the most lovely Christmas they ever had because they each gave everything they had to the other. Is there a greater gift? He has a chain with no watch. And who cares? But that's a perfect marriage when you're spending your time thinking about the other instead of, oh, I really don't want to give up my watch. Or, gee, I'm not going to cut my hair. I mean, the hair means nothing because I love you. The watch means nothing because I love you and I want to please you. And so if you behave like the person you'd want to come home to, if you think every moment about what you could do to make the other person's life worth living, if you can behave as though you love the other person with your last breath, even if you don't feel like it right now, right. those are the three points. If you could make a heart out of three points, that yes. make love. And the rest of it that goes on, the little mistakes we make, the little rude moments, the little idiocies, the little throwing your clothes on the floor, trust me, that doesn't matter when you feel like your heart is being protected by the other person. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This program is all about prayer. Prayer works and prayer changes things. And that's why we encourage people to use that telephone as a little point of contact. It's a toll-free call. And I know that while we're having this wonderful, exciting, exhilarating, uplifting conversation, there are many hearts out there that are broken. That's right. Confused. And they really don't know what to do. But I want to encourage you, pick up that telephone because there is an answer and God can take and mend the broken pieces of your life and your heart and he can give you the strength to put them back together again. Why don't you get on the phone and make that call right now and let us pray with you and help you. And please don't forget to go out and get this book, The Proper Care and Feeding of Marriages. Let's tell Dr. Laura, thank you for being on the Help Line.